Hi everyone, today we have Gopal sir, who is our AIML trainer at Let's Update. Hey Rohan, what's up? How are you? All good so, sir, all good. First of, uh, first of all, thanks for having me here. And of course. Like and and also you know sparing some time from having this interview, knowing about me like what I do. So yeah, it's it's good to be here. Thanks. All right, sir. So my first question would be: Would you like to share with the viewers? What are your achievements? All right. So I have been like a software developer for the software developer, come machine learning engineer, or okay. slash machine learning engineer, I would say, and also a deep learning engineer. I have been into this industry for the past five years, oh. and yeah, I have been doing it for the you know ever since I was in you know college, maybe in third year itself. And that's where I found out my first love, I would say, the Python programming, like, you know, and I started doing it more and more. And now, yeah, now I am here teaching at LU as a subject matter expert in the division of machine learning and deep learning. Sir, every trainer has a way of teaching. So can you share with us what is your methodology? Yeah, sure. I believe in storytelling, right? And along with some visualization, because when you do uh, when you actually read some text or read some theories or anything like you tend to forget them because they are not right now in your application or like you are not using them anywhere. Yeah. But when you have a story to tell, you tend to have some, uh, you know, tend to have some synopsis in your brain or some information. You retain some information out of that story for a longer period of time. And along some visualization, they stick, uh, they st uh, stick around your mind, like maybe even more. So that is why I actually have a habit of even, you know, uh, making some comic strips uh, oh. from my own from yeah from for my from my own teaching methods or from my own teaching uh, you know content like I even wrote a simple comic strip using Mark Grayson and Nolan Grayson from the Invincible you know series on Amazon oh. Prime. Uh, I'm yeah. I'm yet to watch that, but I'm pretty sure it's a great series. Like I've heard a lot. Yeah, about it, it is, it is, it is, it is. And like where I have mentioned, like Mark is a, you know, rude boss, or I would say very, you know, always an infuriated boss and where Nolan is an unpaid intern who just joined for the experience. Right. It will be great if you can share that with me so that I can display to our viewers. Sir, what all tools and frameworks do you use to teach AI and machine learning? Well, firstly, I prefer not to use any tools. Oh. Uh, the re very reason is like when you actually only use a tool, you tend to miss out what exactly going under the hood. So I, I have a habit of you. I have a habit of two way approach. I always first, I always 90% of the times I always that you derive that very algorithm. Like it could be your logistic regression. It could be a linear regression. We try to develop, develop it, develop it from scratch. And then I show them like, okay, this mechanism is happening like this. And then I can like, let them know like, okay, if you want to use some sort of pre-built libraries, you can use such SKLearn or PyTorch or TensorFlow, like, uh, you know, mm -hmm. those, but I, I prefer to develop from very scratch because it actually gives you an intuition about, you know, the uh, dynamics of the algorithm, how exactly it is working. So you tend to interpret your own, you know, uh, decisions and you tend to draw some own, uh, 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 of your own, uh, you know, conclusions, like how it will be helpful for your model, uh, predictive modeling or, you know, any model training task. So that's what I do. Yeah. So basically that means key you first train, what is the backend work or how the ba full framework works before getting into the directly on tools key, what exactly is this tool and that tool, right? Yeah, exactly. And for the, from my preferred tools, which, which are available in the market, when which mm -hmm. are also open source are mainly SKLearn, NumPy, Pandas, like, you know, journal tools. Uh, and also with the, for some deep learning tasks, we can use TensorFlow and PyTorch too. And I prefer, okay, so I preferably use PyTorch. Okay. For, okay. for research purposes and like, uh, so yeah. So basically that means that you prefer using open source and free software so that the students who are learning this can uh, get easier with the training process. Am I right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because it also helps you. It also actually let you build what mm -hmm. you want to build without having to worry about second or third party, you know, pricing. Any like, since you are a, yeah, exactly. Basically you are a student and you know what students are always looking for, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just the free model always. Right. So yeah, we hardly have any money. So getting free option yeah. are the best option. Yeah, exactly. So let's say a student is having a doubt between a session or after seeing a recorded session of yours. So how do you tackle that situation? 
I just ask them. I have a habit of explaining a topic and then waiting for like five minutes. Like I usually say, like if you have any questions, then please ask. I'm ready to answer those. And I do that like maybe four or five times in my session oh. itself. Itself, when it is live, because I don't want anyone to have any sort of confusion. Even if they do, they can always arrange, a, you know, uh, some counseling sessions along with me and uh, from from by reaching out to one of our moderators or somebody. Okay, but of course, yeah, that is how yeah that is how I usually you know uh, prefer. And of course, we uh, also exactly. have one to one mentoring session each week, so that is helpful yeah, for that situation. Definitely. Sir, are there any tips for our viewers who are interested to become a full stack AIML developer in the coming days? Yeah, the first of all, they should actually get clear their foundation skills, like which are probability and stats. People actually are, you know, so much hyped about machine learning and deep yeah. learning. Machine learning is nothing but statistics along with programming, tech, uh, you know, like uh, programming, you know, skills. That's it. Like you add uh, some statistics techniques along with the programming, there you go. You have machine learning, right? But they really focus upon if they should, uh, you know, if they should learn about probability or stats on some, you know, stat, uh, statistics techniques. So they, I would, I would highly emphasize on that. They should definitely go for some, you know, uh, statistics or probability courses out there, like which are available okay. freely on Khan Academy, maybe on YouTube as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, that that is where I would like to emphasize on. Like they should focus upon this part, like the probability or stats. So basically, and the first step would be to do the research before getting along with the course. Am I right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. And the thing is like, uh, you can never go ahead if you don't like math and machine learning. Yeah. Never. Like after probability of stats, that's the only, that only covers the data analysis and visualization part. For, for like for the deep learning, for the machine learning, then you have some differential calculus, you have some integral calculus, matrix multiplication is also there. So you need to have some some basic understanding of those concepts too. Yeah, so usually I would, even I have heard this. Yeah, yeah. Please go on. Yeah. So usually, so I would usually like I usually uh, emphasize on that. Like whenever we, whenever I have had an uh, I had a student who had some sort of problems, my go-to questions would be like, do they have some understanding about like probability or stats or not? If they are having some problem, they because machine learning is not a god or something. Like yeah. it, there is a saying in machine learning, garbage in and garbage out. So you need to understand the data first. You need to understand how you can manipulate the data. And to, in, in order to understand the data, you need to know, right, maths, probability and stat. Like you, you can never actually, you know, overlook those topics. So, so that you can play with the data in everywhere possible, right? Yeah, exactly. So just don't, you know, don't look for the shortcuts, <laughs> like no, not yeah. not using, like, like directly using just the libraries which are available out there. Like it won't take you further. It might actually get your tasks done, but definitely you won't be able to build some cutting edge technology. So here is an interesting question. We usually know what is a student's perspective, what he wants from a trainer or the institute. But from a trainer's perspective, would you like to tell me key? What do you exactly want from a student? What is your expectations from a student, basically? Um, willing to have an open mind first. Like okay. concepts could be new. Like people usually interpret hard as new. Sometimes what exactly happens, like they don't have any clue about like if the topic is hard, if the topic is new. And then what they think, like if this is actually new, this is hard. Like this is not, that is not the case, right? And so I would say like having, having a zeal of understanding a new concept, having a zeal of understanding a new theory should be there. They should have that, you know, guts or they, those, those feelings, like if they can actually, uh, you know, uh, they are willing to put their efforts in order to learning any technology, not per se machine learning or deep learning. It, it actually goes for web development too. Like they should be, they should be able to, they should be able to adapt themselves in an environment where they can feel themselves like they are growing. And yeah, the most and the four the, like the most thing that I would actually like to emphasize here. Ninety percent of the students who join any program, they actually come mm -hmm. for certifications. Mm -hmm. Please don't do it. Like students, if you are if you are watching this 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 video, okay, please don't do it. If you are coming for certifications, like <laughs> like I don't how know, like you can ever actually yeah how yeah. Uh, how exactly your certification won't take you any further. Okay, focus upon real time or real world skills rather than that. Mm -hmm. okay so. Yeah, that is, this is something I would like. So to basically like come for they... teaching and for learning and consuming the knowledge rather than getting direct to the conclusion that you get the certificates. 
yeah exactly like that is that is actually people not people but students in general they are more yeah uh, uh, you know they they are more real result oriented rather than process oriented right so they don't like the process of learning something new rather they just want to have it you know then they get have eager that to go to the last part yeah. the, the final phase so that they can get the certification rather than learning the whole process of how to do this how to do that and that is what important for the fundamentals yeah and it it goes for everything right it just not for machine learning yeah in general in life as well yeah exactly <laughs> sir how does it feel to nurture a beginner or a newbie in programmer to become a proper job ready programmer well it's actually a huge responsibility you are taking someone's responsibility to get yeah. them job or you know get them placed well uh, it is not in our hands all we can do right now is to guide you through a certain process to a you know we can just navigate your thought process where you can achieve it we are here to help you in order to achieve what you want but we can never be able to you know be a decision maker like you will yeah. going to get that for sure right so for me it always has has been or you know will be will going to be a responsibility i always try to solve my students problem as fast as i can as with as efficiently as i can okay and i always have you know done that in my in my uh, in my career so far to like i it like even for that like i started teaching when i was 19 okay when i was in my so uh, like second year of my college and yeah. like i used to teach maths there physics and maths both so that is where like it all actually sparked <laughs> uh, the so idea of becoming like a for, trainer and to explain yeah. others how to do uh, this yeah, and exactly. how to learn this yeah. Yeah. yeah great great so in 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 becoming this uh, this this you know in becoming this uh, as a trainer or for any any kind of a trainer any kind of a teacher it also helps you out a lot in learning a new concept but with a different perspective yeah and because like, you have to uh, be uh, skillful not not skillful but uh, to be adapted to all the newer techniques and how to talk with the students who are of a younger age or who are new in this yeah definitely because the reason the very reason for that is i am being forced to articulate a process i am being forced to articulate a you know theory well in that case i need to you know first understand it thoroughly yeah and i i have i have literally tried it a uh, many ways like how can i actually make something good out of that theory or good out of that you know concept like in a different ways like i mm-hmm. i even have i may have actually wrote, i may have even jot down around like eight or nine notebooks in machine oh. learning itself a uh, deep learning itself yeah with by just writing my own thought process like what exactly the concept says ki what exactly is machine learning this only is a big topic i believe yeah exactly it's actually a phd subject people oh. do phd on that yeah so viewers if you're watching this you can google that down ki what exactly is that topic in phd as well <laughs> yeah definitely they can <laughs> <laughs>